Day three of Grow Your Own Food Challenge. Today I'm talking about incubating eggs. I've been collecting some eggs over the last few days and now I'm gonna go in and set the incubator. Some of the eggs came from these hens here. I've got two roosters and I don't know about 15 hens in here. And I've also got some, uh, collected some eggs from my other flock of Australops. They're all purebred Australops. Some are, are whites and blacks and splash and blue. There's, there's four different variations of Australops, but they're all, they're all purebred Australops. It's pretty windy out here. So let's go inside and get this incubator on. So I'm inside now out of the wind. I'm going to be putting 49 eggs in this incubator here. So this incubator is made by a company in Italy called Barotto and the model is Real 49. It holds 49 chicken eggs. Uh, over the years I've used, I haven't used like heaps of different incubators, but one thing I have found is this incubator, it's about $700. You've got incubators that are about $700 and then you've got some cheap crap on eBay for, I don't know, 100 or 200 bucks. There's not much in between. You either get something cheap and nasty for like 200 bucks, maybe a little bit less, and they will hatch eggs, but your hatch rate might be 20%. Or you've got something good like a Burrotto. I would recommend going something good. The only time I'd go with a real cheap one, let's just say you're doing a homeschool project with the kids, you're probably gonna put an incubator on once a year. You're not paying for the eggs, you just got them given to you. You spend 180 bucks on an incubator, you put 40 eggs in there, you get 12 or 15 out. This Barotto is a good incubator, so let's set it up now. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the lid of the incubator. This is the inside of the lid. The heating element is up in there and so is the fan. So all the electronics is up above the eggs and above the chickens. Really good design. So this is the incubator. These, these red trays, they hold, hold a chicken egg, but the actual design of them, not that I ever have, but they also hold quail eggs. So let's just see if I can get a shot there. So this is one called a pod and it holds one chicken egg. I'll put one chicken egg in there. But see how it's got these, let's call them clover leaves. It's got four of them. They actually hold a quail egg. So you can put 49 ordinary chicken eggs or you can put 210 quail eggs. Anyway, food for thought in case you ever wanna hatch some quails. So with your eggs, you want to check that they don't have any little cracks. Now, I probably don't have the best light here, but this one's got a little crack. So I'm going to go somewhere where there's a little bit more light and show you what the crack looks like. Okay, so on the egg here, can you see those really faint lines? They're little cracks. You just want to inspect all your eggs. Like if you quickly just pick this up and you go, oh, let's put it in the incubator. Because it's got all these little hairline cracks, this one's probably not gonna hatch. So just inspect your eggs carefully. So I've sorted out my eggs to make sure none of them have got hairline cracks. Now it's a case of just putting the eggs from the carton into the incubator. incubator. So a couple of things I want to talk about in case you've never used an incubator before. So eggs need turning. If we just put an egg flat on a surface and put the right temperature for 21 days, it's not going to hatch. The egg needs to be turned. So the egg, you might see them in the incubator and they're sitting off to the side. Every two hours it actually rocks it and goes the other way. It'll actually do it very slowly, this incubator, so it won't just do it in one solid move. It'll actually move it really gradually and it'll get to that way and it'll move it around. A mother, a mother hen who's sitting on chickens, she'll actually roll the eggs underneath her and keep turning them. So the 
incubator turns them. If you got an incubator that doesn't automatically turn them, it's gonna be you turning them maybe three times a day. And if you've got 49 eggs in there and you've got to open it up and turn each one, very labor intensive. So we turn them, so the auto turner is on for 18 days or on the 18th day, Anyway, the last three days it's not on. I don't know if you turn off on the 17th day or the 18th day. So 19, 20, 21. Yeah, so for 18 days they get turned. I just set a reminder in my phone and then I just turn it off. So it's pretty easy. Actually change the, the tray. But you'll see that in about 18 days. The other thing the incubator also needs is humidity. So you need to top up the little water reservoirs. Because I'm all about efficiency and I like automation, I've bought one of these units, which is also made by Barotto, which is a humidity regulator. It's probably what you call it. So I just get this little hose and pop it in a bottle of water. That's two liters of water. And it has a sensor at the back there and it just senses the humidity and if it's getting too low it'll just put a few drops of water in and when that um, bit, few drops get evaporated into the system and it goes oh the humidity is too low it'll just keep putting drops of water so it's just an automatic pump hooked up to hum a humidity sensor. So basically when I'm about to turn this on I just turn on the humidity thing I, I put the incubator on set it to the right temperature and then I just check that water bottle once a week. That's what I do. And then at day 18, I transfer the eggs to the hatch tray, which you'll see in about 18 days. And then three days after that, the chickens will start to hatch. So I'm going to put the lid on, put it at the right temperature, turn the water thing on, and um, set my alarm for 18 days from now. Okay, so I've just put the lid on the incubator. I can set the temperature to 37.7 degrees Celsius. That's the best temperature for incubating eggs. The last three days, I think it comes back to 37.2, but we'll talk about that then. So it's, it's currently sitting at 24.7 degrees, so the temperature's rising. So the thermostat is on, it's set for 37.7. That's doing its thing. I'm now gonna plug in the auto turner. So this yellow box here has got a motor in it and it's gonna auto turn the eggs. So one of the difference between a cheap incubator and a really good one, this really good one, it's gonna have a really good thermostat and a really good heating element to make sure it doesn't go too hot. You don't want a, um, a cheapy that um, it's too cold and then it pumps it up to 38 degrees and then it cuts off and then like it drops to like 35 and then it pumps it up and it's going between 35 and 38. A good incubator has a good amount of insulation and it'll just maintain that temperature and just turn the heat on and off as it needs to. So the heat's on, incubator's doing its thing. I've turned the auto turner on so the eggs are slowly moving. Now I'm going to plug in the humidity regulator, turn that on, and I'll just set that, and I've set that for 45%, so 45% humidity. So when it goes under the 45%, it'll automatically suck water from this bottle through the pump and then into the front reservoirs of the incubator and keep it all at the perfect humidity. Please don't get overwhelmed. You might be going, wow, there's like power cords and there's water and there's everything involved and it seems a bit too complex. Really, it's not. If you've got this incubator and the automatic um, humidity regulator, you probably read the instructions and in about 30 minutes, you'll put the eggs in, set the temperature and set the humidity and you're done. All I need to do now is to make sure there's water in that bottle and come back in 18 days. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully it has inspired you to get an incubator and start hatching some of your own eggs. I've got to keep moving because tomorrow I'm processing meat chickens, so stay tuned for that one. If you want to join the private Facebook group, please go to chickencaravan.com forward slash grow. And I'll see you tomorrow.